The New York Rangers have a star player who ended up making a comment about Alexi Lafreniere's new contract extension that he signed very recently. So in today's video, we're going to take a look at that quote from a certain star player on this New York Rangers team, but also take a look at you know kind of what impact Alexi Lafreniere's deal could kind of have on this New York Rangers team going forward and into the future as well, because I would say it is a fairly team-friendly deal. And also kind of talk about a, a bit about uh, Igor Sturkin's kind of deal as well and kind of what we could possibly end up seeing going forward and kind of what impact his deal could possibly have on this team's future kind of cap space situation as well so let's get right into it here starting off with the quote from a certain star player and that is Vincent Trocek obviously a line mate of Alexi Lafreniere he was on uh, Lafreniere's line last season being the center of Panarin and obviously Lafreniere and they ended up having a monster season together all three of those guys had some career years in certain categories whether it was you know, goals, assists, or points there. Obviously, Lafreniere had a career high in all three categories. And obviously, Panarin and Trocek did quite well as well, having some career highs in certain categories as well. So he basically said, quote, I personally think he's doing good by the Rangers with this deal. Trocek told the Athletics' Peter Baugh. And I think myself and a lot of other Rangers fans definitely do agree with what Trocek is saying here that Lafreniere is pretty much doing a pretty nice thing here for the Rangers and this team going forward. Now, could Lafreniere have gotten a you know ten plus million dollar per year contract? No, but could he have gotten maybe another mill or at least you know taken a three, four, five year deal where he would be able to hit for agency as an unrestricted free agent? You know, in his later twenties, he definitely could have done that, and that would have been a little worse off for the Rangers long term wise. I mean, this is one of those deals. And I talked about it in the last video as well, kind of breaking down this contract that. This is one of those deals that, you know, long term wise, when you're looking at year, you know, five, six, seven of this contract, those are the years where you could really see this look like truly, you know, a top five contract in the entire NHL. Lafreniere is a guy who, by the end of this contract, here, the seven year deal, he's going to be pretty much for the most likely part in his prime years of his NHL career, right? Some guys, you know, whether it's kind of the mid to later 20s or early 30s, or some guys as well, you know, some guys do kind of take those big steps forward later on in their career as well. I mean, we've seen a guy like Panarin, obviously. He's still, as he gets closer in his mid-30s, mid he's still being an absolute star. There had a career year last year, obviously, in points. So guys can definitely have those big years later on. But for the most part, it's kind of around those later 20 kind of years of players' career where you do see them have some of those monster seasons. And we're going to have a guy like Lafreniere making, you know, about $7.5 million, just under that, in his later 20s, when he could be a guy possibly putting up 90, 95 points and be close to 100 points there, that is a true possibility. Now, maybe some of you think I'm a little crazy for saying that, but I truly do think Lafreniere can be a pretty much, you know, year in and year out, point per game plus kind of guy and maybe have a couple seasons here and there of reaching that 90, 95, maybe close to 100 point mark as well. I think that's still possible for a guy like Lafreniere. Remember, he's still only 23, turned 23 fairly recently. He's still young, still getting better. And this is a guy long term who I think has the potential to truly have one of the best contracts in the entire NHL. And I am so happy and honestly a bit thankful that Lafreniere took a deal like this. I really did want to see him take a long-term deal with this squad. I didn't want to see that middle kind of range deal like a guy like Elliot Freeman kind of came out and said that he kind of thought Lafreniere might look to take that kind of medium term deal where it'd probably be more like a three, four, maybe five year deal to where he could hit unrestricted free agency in his late 20s. He didn't do that. He took that longer term deal. And that is great news for this New York Rangers team. And obviously, Vincent Trocek definitely would agree. But now let's shift our focus over to someone like Igor Shosturkin, who ended up declining that massive eight-year, $88 million contract worth an average of $11 million per season. And I don't know, by no means am I trying to hate on Igor there. I really think he is an absolutely phenomenal player. I have talked about him so much and how I think he is truly the best goaltender in the entire NHL. If you watch the channel for a while... You may be a little sick of it. I talk about Igor a lot and how much I truly do like him as a player. I think he's an absolutely phenomenal player and a huge, huge part of this team. He is the MVP of this squad. I mean, you take a look at the last three playoff runs that we've gone on. He's been the kind of core guy, the main guy of this team to really kind of help drag us along and win us games here and there as well and series as well. So he's obviously a truly phenomenal player an elite player for this team and truly is, I think, the best goaltender in the entire NHL. And I think he deserves to be the highest paid goaltender in the league as well. But him declining that $11 million contract and presumably kind of wanting that maybe $12 plus million deal and actually getting that 
isn't going to have the best effect on the New York Rangers cap space situation going forward. Now, you know, does he, like I said, truly deserve that kind of money? Maybe he does. But at the end of the day, when you take a look at the rest of the goalie market, it really doesn't say or kind of show that he should really be making that much money. Now, is he truly one of the best players in the entire NHL? Absolutely. But the goalie market doesn't really kind of show that he should be getting paid, you know, that 12, 13 kind of million dollar mark like some of the players are starting to get towards now. Obviously, in the NHL, you got guys like Dry Settle, you know, like David already has his deal up there, Matthews, those kind of guys. Their deal and Panarin isn't terribly far off either. But those kind of star level, you know, players, not kind of goaltenders, are obviously the forward slash defensemen. Those guys are obviously making, you know, an incredible amount of money and are really up there towards that 12, 13 mil mark where you don't see many goaltenders anywhere really close to that mark. And you take a look at some of the newest kind of signings as well, goalie contracts that kind of been made, you know, Jake Ottinger and Jeremy Swayman, those deals aren't even really close to that number or even close to that mark at all. And yes, some those guys are, you know, RFAs and stuff like that, restricted for Aiden. So there is a bit of a difference, but still... That big of a gap, I'm not quite sure, really says that Igor should be getting, you know, 12 and a half plus million dollars. Now, would I be more than okay with him getting, you know, 11 mil, 11 and a half? I can be fine with that for sure. But him getting 12 and a half to 13 or whatever he's looking for, truly, I think it might be a little too much there. And, you know, at the end of the day, there, I want to see Igor here with this team long term, but him signing one of those kind of massive, massive deals where he's going to really hold out possibly for every last dollar they could possibly get there and really kind of push towards that 12 and a half mark plus. Potentially, I don't know exactly, I'm kind of speculating obviously, but him declining the $11 million deal, he's always going to want more than that. If he truly can get that 12 and a half plus kind of deal, that's not going to have a great impact on this range of cap space situation going forward. Now, Lafreniere signing the deal that he did helps with that, but Hopefully, kind of Igor, you know, seeing the deal that Lafreniere got there, taking a bit of a team-friendly kind of discount, slight bit there, you could say, obviously, mainly kind of projecting this deal long-term to kind of see that great value. But you get what I'm saying there, hopefully, and obviously, my kind of idea here, or kind of thought, is that, you know, does Igor deserve to be the highest-paid goaltender in the entire NHL? Yes. Does he deserve $12.5 plus million? I would say not. You take a look at that next highest-paid goalie in the league after, let's say, Igor potentially gets that $12 million deal. It would be Carey Price at 10 and a half, wasn't played in the league for a while now. And then after that, it is Sergei Bobrovsky who signed that, you know, massive deal worth $10 million per season. So, you know, does Igor really deserve to be getting paid two and a half, two mil plus more than the next highest paid active goaltender in the league? I'm not quite sure about that. I think it should be maybe a little lower. Hopefully, kind of the market obviously kind of dictates that, but we'll have to wait and see truly what happens with Igor and Chris Drury in the front office there and kind of what negotiations they come to in the end. That's going to do it for today's video, though. If you have enjoyed, definitely click that like and subscribe button. It helps out the channel a ton. I would really, really appreciate it. And also, definitely comment down below your thoughts on Lafreniere's nice new extension, but also what you kind of think Igor is going to get on his next extension, but also possibly kind of what you think he deserves on his next deal. Comment that down below. I'd love to hear your thoughts and opinions. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you next one. See ya.